So Darlene, I have a few questions for you. Um, can you help us to, to uh, with a few examples of what it meant to you when you had some service providers get it? So when we first came up um, upon FASD for our daughter who was five, at, at the age of five, I'm an early childhood educator, so we were a newborn foster home and that was a natural fit as an early childhood educator. I've got the skills, I can do this. And so she was a two-year-old that was really hyperactive. <laughs> I said to my husband, she's two. I said, all oh, good, she's gonna get through this. She made it to three. She was still this energetic, more energy than I'd ever seen in my experience of 25 years working in childcare. And I'm like, well, she is really energetic, but you know what, she's had a bit of a rough go. Three years of visits with biological mom, you know what, we're, we're gonna do this, we've got this, I've got the skills. Set up her environment for her, I knew how to meet her needs. Um, four came along, and she's just not making that jump. I kept saying, maybe, we're gonna get there, it's okay. Five came along, and it was Christmas Eve, and sat at a family function, and things were just not going well. Got home that night, and I'm like, something's not right. They're, we're just not getting ahead. She's not making milestone developments there. And then I get on the internet, get looking for people to help. Um, there's no, there really wasn't much. Did come across the name Angela Geddes on um, somewhere, and called her that into the new year, and we connected on the phone. And I really had this aha moment with Angela that I was like, wow, she gets it, like she really does get it. She, she knows what I'm going through, she's, she's ready, she's ready to help, and just that feeling that I wasn't gonna be alone. I've not met another Angela in my life within service systems, I just haven't. Um, the systems are very, very, not FASD informed, um, and I'm, that's why you're here today, and I'm so happy that you're here, and I hope that if you leave with a glimmer of it's a real thing, that you will no longer look at a caregiver and go, hmm, like really, is it autism? Mm -hmm. No, it's not autism. Um, I've had a pediatrician tell us that Emma would get over her FASD in two years. <laughs> Developmental, um, the disability tax credit form she filled out for us that she would be over her FAST in two years. I'm like, wow, what's the research? <laughs> I'm, I'm anxious to know how that falls into place. So that lack of understanding and that deer in the headlights look. One story that's gonna come quickly, um, our daughter does also struggle with cyclical vomiting syndrome. And so we normally manage it at home. Last spring, we just couldn't get her through it. Um, she'll literally vomit for days. She'll heave, dry heave for days. It's a, it's a total brain gut disconnect. So we had to go to Emerge to get some help. Um, at triage, I did not say that we had adopted. I just expressed she had fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. This is what we're dealing with. We need IV treatment. We've got to get her through this. Um, and my husband was with me, and he just looked at me, and he said, if I wasn't here, he said, I don't think I'd believe you when you talk about the looks that we're getting right now, the stigma. And we got treated not great in Emerge. You talked about these children being chatty and expressive. So amidst heaving and amidst all of that, she's still chatty. <laughs> she doesn't ever stop talking. <laughs> and that's nature versus nurture, I don't know yet. <laughs> um, but anyways, we'll put it on the FASD for now. <laughs> so she's heaving and she's chatting and then they're asking her questions. Her expressive language score is in the superior level. Our speech and language pathologist is amazing. Her receptive language score is in the second percentile. That means she can talk me into anything she wants, and I'm like, how did we get here? But her understanding of what everybody else is doing is like nil. And so what does that look like when a caregiver or when a, when a professional asks a child the question, well, she's heaving, by the way, um, asks her a question, she looks up at the caregiver like, I need help, like interpret this for me. That's what she does, I'm her interpreter. But what does that look like to people with that deer in the headlights look who don't get FASD? I look like the psychotic caregiver who doesn't let my child talk and my child's scared. She's looking to the caregiver for interpretation. And so 
support systems will then look at that and go, that child really doesn't have a voice because she's looking at her mom all the time to do the answering. And so in Emerge, we were set up as stigma. Stigma, stigma, stigma. We did not get the love. We did not get the support. We did get admitted. We get up to the floor. And the nurse who's taking us up to the floor, she's looking at the file. She looks at Emma. She looks at me. She goes, can I just talk to you for a minute? So she took me into the hallway. She goes, I've seen you out with the, um, the choir that your daughter is in. And it's, it's an all-inclusive choir for children with disabilities. She goes, does she have a diagnosis? And I said, yes, she's got fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. She looks at her intake form from emerge to admitting, and under diagnosis, it said none. And she says, I'll be making some phone calls, and I'm going to get this set up. She got us into a private room for sensory needs. She understood cyclical vomiting. She understood FASD. She, she said, I'm going to get you a private room. And I was like, oh, my word. And I cried, because I'm like, somebody got us. Somebody wasn't looking at us like we were the insane parents who had, here she goes, I'm going to cry now, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Um, she got us, and she set us up for success then. Then the medical team comes in, and the nurse said, anytime that medical team comes in your room, I will be there, and I'm going to advocate with you. Because the medical team, I asked them, do you know anything about FASD? Nothing. It's a sensory thing. They don't like lights and sound, so that's pretty much what, you know, what FASD is. I'm like, oh... My daughter did self-advocate, though. She was coming through it, and she was still looking at me, queuing for me to answer, or like confused when she got asked a question. And then she looked at the one resident, and she said, I don't understand what you're saying, and I need my mom to help me. I was like, oh, you just did it. She self-advocated. So just understand that if you're looking and you're doing assessments on caregivers, parents, that dyad, you're looking at attachment, you're trying to see what's going on, you're like, oh, let's watch this mom and child. Know that if that child is looking to the parent, don't just assume that there's something big going on there that that mama and that child that doesn't have that um, security. That child's looking sometimes for that interpretation of the world. Um, my daughter presents very well. You would think she was quite... She sure does, yeah. yeah.